When it comes to top level StarCraft 2, it simply does not get any better than these two pro gamers facing off against each other. They have been the number one and two in the world respectively for, I want to say, at least the last five years or so. And whenever players discuss who the greatest StarCraft 2 pro gamer of all time is, these are the two names that will come up more so than any others. And yet, they rarely play against each other. So I am very excited to introduce to you in today's series, in the top right hand corner of the map Raduset Station, we're looking inside of the main base of Maru, his opponent in the opposite corner, playing with the Red Zerg drones, he's from Finland, and he goes by the name of Sero. This particular series was played a couple of days ago during the WTL, the World Team League. As we have Maru, by the way, here going for a command center first into a barracks, completely scoutless. I love it. A very greedy start. This particular series, it was played a couple of days ago during the WTO, and I woke up this morning with these replays in my email inbox. I'm almost a little bit giddy, I've noticed, because I haven't seen it yet. I saw some VODs floating around on YouTube already, but I figured, you know what, I think they're going to be sending me the replays soon. I'm going to wait. So today we're going to experience together exactly what ended up going down. That being said, the WTL, it uses a bit of a different system for the tournament than any of the other games that I usually cast on my channel. So this is not a best of three, it's a best of two. Now, the World Team League, it's a team league, as you may have already guessed, and basically map score is the most important thing that you need to have as a team in this particular event. It just means that an individual series like this particular one can have maybe a bit of an unsatisfying ending because... I mean, it's a best of two. There's a chance we're going to get a 1-1 score. But I guess it's all about the journey before the destination anyways. So I think we should just enjoy the games here. Because uh, we'll find out together what ended up going down here. This is an exceptionally greedy build right here from Maru. It really doesn't get any greedier than this. I think he's mining out these skinny mineral fields in the pocket base to go for a third command center. Okay, there we go. Nice and early. So we're three minutes into the game. The man made one marine, did not scout the opponent, and he's going triple command center. There's now going to be a reactor. Will we go for Hellions? Okay, so we are going to get more units going here eventually. But your average gold league baneling buster could literally destroy Maru at this point in the game. The thing is, though, he's playing Radoset Station. This is the largest map in the current map pool, at the very least as far as rush distance goes. So it literally takes multiple seconds more time to get across the map. I think it's like 43 seconds compared to like the... Normally it's like 34 to 36 or so, so it takes a long time for your units to arrive on the other side of the map. And Well, he's also going up against Serral. Serral is very well known for being a macro monster. He's very good when it comes to just producing a lot of stuff. And he's very good as well at protecting his bases in the earlier stages of this game. So this is Maru playing the map, but also very much so playing the opponent. Looks like it's going to be that Stimpak follow-up here for the Terran. No second supply depot here either, by the way, as we've already started setting up the wall. Any sort of roach rush, because it's also a Viking. We're not going to be going for a tech lab, it seems, because otherwise we would have made the switcheroo. Yeah, any sort of aggression here from the Zerg would have been a disaster for Maru to deal with. But it looks like he's going to be able to get away with the greed. Ooh, okay, cute little move right here from Serral. I've seen this once before, actually. I thought it was a really cheeky move, so... On this map, it's difficult for the Zerg to creep up this section because if you put a tumor right over here, you can't actually reach the other side of the debris wall unless you decide to, well, deconstruct the debris. That's one of the options, I guess, but that leaves you maybe a little bit more vulnerable against siege tank pushes. So Sero here mining out one of the skinny mineral fields, puts a tumor there, and I think this will ultimately allow him to send it towards the other side of that wall. And that will make, well, sending those creep tumors around the right side of the map a whole lot easier. Overlord Scout in the main base just now here. It confirmed exactly what's going on. It can't really be much of a surprise right here for Serral, but he will have figured out at this point that this is a very greedy start from the Terran player for sure. So he is powering drones out as quickly as possible. We do have 12 Zerklings, but those are really just there in case these Hellions do decide to run by. Myro giving his opponent the benefit of the doubt. I don't think he's really seen a lot of links, but he also knows that it's going to be very unlikely that there are no Zerklings waiting on the creep anywhere. So it's almost like a bit of a skill check, right? You force your opponent to make some units and ultimately that will slow down their economies a little bit okay so heavy macro focus right here in game number one you love to see it there it is by the way that creep tumor 
Okay, I actually... Hmm. I think it's smart. Mostly because it rubs salt in the wound, right, of the opponent. Mentally speaking, at least, that's gonna sting a little bit right there for Serral. But that is quite pricey, too. That scan could have definitely been a mule. Interestingly enough, by the way, Serral is going what seems to be Mutalisks, Zerklings, and Banelings. Now, if you haven't watched a lot of StarCraft 2 over the last few months, Mutaling Bane is not a particularly popular unit composition in StarCraft 2 over the last few years. A lot of players, including Serral, do prefer playing that Hydra into Lurker style instead when they do want to play a heavy macro game. So, this is Serral playing very greedy early on, and then I guess we're gonna just pile on the pressure with Mutaling Bane. The main advantage of that unit comp is that you can take map control. So it's difficult for the Terran really to move around the map, because every time you move out, the Mutas can dive into your bases. Widowmines are already building here, though, for Maru. So that's the right choice. Siege tanks here would not be quite optimal, so... Even though he hasn't seen exactly what he's playing against... Yeah, he doesn't know exactly where that Spire is. Clever positioning as well by Serral, because if a scan would be done over here in the middle of the main, it would probably still be outside of the range of where that Spire is actually located. So there we go. Evo's here eventually. Mutas are gonna be coming up. Marine drop. The first one. It's arrived on the other side. Three drones. And you can see that these guys are tiptoeing around each other, right? Like, these guys are being as careful as possible because they know that if they make one error, say these medevacs end up going down. Against most opponents, they would be able to macro their way out of it. But in this case, Maru is just going for guaranteed damage because he does not want to take any chances. Crease threat is already looking ridiculous over here in the top left-hand corner of this map, though. Both players playing upwards of like 8 to 10 buttons a second, apparently, looking at the APM counter, which is... <laughs> yeah, they're gonna speed up from here as well, by the way. It's already a sight to behold. Plus two, started up. Don't forget about the armor upgrade. The attack, uh, the attack upgrade first here is certainly the right one to go. Um, Serral has not actually gone... No, I was gonna say, I, I thought for a second he cancelled it. He does already have the Baneling Speed upgrade done. This would be a very difficult push to hold if he did not have it. Liberator over here on the right side also getting some work in. And you know what? These Marines, they're going to be able to put in quite a bit of work on that hatch. The base indeed ends up going down. Thought Serral maybe cancelled the Baneling Speed just to get some additional Mutas going. And honestly, if you're going to give up the hatch, maybe you should have. Marine drop over here as well now at the pocket base. Not a lot of creep spread, so he doesn't know, but this base completely unprotected. Maru's been looking for the tech route of his opponent for a while. No response for him, because he's busy microing on the other side of the map. Looks like a lot of units here have fallen on the side of the Zerk as well. Now, finally, the Terran reinforcements do show up at the Terran's pocket base, but there were no missile turrets set up. And what, yeah, really looked like a pretty rough start right there for the finisher. Now, it turns out to actually be very playable for him. 24 workers in just a matter of seconds were killed by these unscouted Mutas. And Serral's doubling down. We have more and more Mutas coming up. This base over here on the right side could even be attacked as well. 25 SCVs. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, interestingly enough, because Mutas are such an unpopular unit overall, they also automatically become a little bit better over time because you just don't see them that much anymore. Players don't really respect the option for Mutas as frequently. In the past, you would never see a Terran player get caught with, no, missile turrets, you know? Like, that would be insane. I'm talking like five, six, maybe seven years ago. We used to see Muta play a lot more frequently. But these days, since Terrans don't really deal with Mutas very often, they can still be caught off guard by them once again. Here's a Widowmind drop going across. Somehow, some way, these Mutas decided to let it slip. Sporecrawler coming up. We are gonna drop down one or two, okay. Serral decides to run. Three even end up going down here. Yeah, it's a very slippery unit comp, but ultimately they're not going to be able to get that much work done. Widowmine on the ramp also gets cleaned up. And you can see that Serral's struggling here with the creep. Like, he's got loads of creep tumors in this location. But because there's no creep in this area, right over here, he can't really see those medevacs coming in unless he stumbles across them or upon them in the middle of the map. There's a watchtower, I suppose. I would actually love to see him taking that one just to make it a bit easier to clean all of it up. But I guess most of the time when players do go up against Mutas, they will also be a lot more hesitant to send out those Metavex. So maybe that's one of the reasons why Serral did decide to play Muta play. But apparently that does not really uh, persuade Maru from not playing any sort of Metavex drops. Thor coming up right here for the Terran. 3-3, fired up nice and early. 
You can see that with this Muta start, Serral decided to delay his upgrades. These Ufo Chambers, so they're only just now, well, the first one at least is like halfway done with the upgrade. Hive is coming, but as far as like the late game tech goes, that's all gonna be delayed by a minute or two right here for the Zerg. And that means that Maru does have an opportunity to come in with a very scary army, especially when 3-3 finishes. Okay. Looks like for now, though, we're just gonna start up the Command Center Explosion. Yeah. This is what Mara likes to do. Most Terran players try to mimic this style, but they're yeah, not quite as good at playing against it as, well, Mr. Maru. Or they're not quite as good at playing it, rather, as Mr. Maru is. Here's another Widowmind drop. Bit of deja vu from just a few minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> That's a much more aggressive handling here from the, uh, the Zerk. Five drones end up going down, bunch of marines, or a bunch of zerklings, rather. I guess the zerk marine over here, and maybe a few banelings also decided to blow up there. All right, here's the transition, though, that we normally see from Terrans. It's gonna be the ghost. Ghost together with liberators is usually the tech path that Terrans like to take these days. But against Mutas, do you really want to be transitioning towards ghosts super quickly? Do you really want to be going into liberators at all? Ultra Cavern here for Serral. So he is not gonna go into any sort of Lurker play here, it seems. He's just gonna double down on Mutaling Bane into Ultras. So this, in a way, is a very old-school approach here from Serral. And I can imagine he's mostly doing that in... Yeah, it, because of this this map, right? So if I, if I were to make a guess, he's probably only gonna be doing this in the first game of this series. It's a lot of missile turrets. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult for those Mutas to come in. The natural expansion, though, not quite as well protected, at least on the left, but there's a large group of missile turrets set up right over here as well. Saro is slowly gobbling up the entire left side of the map. Terra not able to advance there quite as easily, but we are getting to the point, as we do have six dropper lords now here. Maybe we're gonna drop some Lurk Zerklings over here on the left? I mean, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that might actually open up an opportunity as well for those Mutas to come back in for more later on. Anyways, um, it's difficult here for Maru to expand all over the right side of the map because those bases are quite far apart. But he does have the command centers, that's for sure. Four orbital commands, we have one more right here that needs to be morphed into one. We have two command centers on top of that just about to finish as well. If he manages to take his half of the map, that's ultimately going to be really nice for the Terran. The split map scenarios usually go in favor of the Terran in the long run because they can trade more cost efficiently. Now, I'm pulling up the unit's loss tab. Normally, at this stage in the game, a lot more resources would have been lost on both sides of the map. So far, apparently, Serral has been slightly more cost efficient. Which is actually pretty uncommon. Here comes the Zorkling drop, by the way. Straight into that base. These are properly upgraded links. They have Adrenal Glance right now as well, so that's gonna give them quite a bit more attack speed. And they are indeed getting rid of a lot of those missile turrets very rapidly. Muta's in the meantime, though, on the other side of the map. Yeah, we're gonna be forced to start up some more missile turrets here as well. Burrow was indeed researched, so Serral's gonna be able to try and keep these units alive or maybe force a second scan. Okay. We went from tiptoeing to being a lot more in the face of the opponent, right? Ultimately, though, this will have to come down to a clash between the two armies. Both players right now are basically maxed out. Neither of them really have a unit composition that they're gonna be too happy with. So they will probably be trading out some of those lower tier units here as the next couple minutes go on. Tactical nuke. All right. I'll set up a camera location hotkey. Don't mind if I do. Tactical nuke coming up right now here for the Terran player. Again, not really something... We have rarely seen split maps lately, right? We used to see it all the time in the previous map pool, especially on Gresven and Neo Humanity on those maps. Lately, though, we haven't really been enjoying them as frequently, and it's kind of exciting for me to now see one of them once again. Base here in the bottom right and quarter. I mean, honestly, those Mutas just forcing out a million missile turrets. Twelve of them have gone down. How many do we have in total right now on the map? Eighteen! Versus twenty Mutas? I mean, that alone, honestly, makes it pretty manageable. The ghost number, though, it has been growing. Yeah, I think we're maybe getting to a position as well where Serral's maybe thinking, yo, maybe these Mutas, I mean, they're nice, but do I really want to still have them? I would not be surprised if he does not queue up any additional Mutas right now moving forward. 
He is getting the plus three air weapons. Obviously, the Brute Lord transition is always a potential one too. So that's kind of nice when it comes to you playing Mutas in the mid game. Suddenly, Brute Lords become a lot more terrifying. Now, there are a few Infestors here in the mix. Sneaky Fungal Growths coming from an angle that Terran does not expect. Always an opportunity. Golden Minerals here taken in the middle. We're now going to start working on the debris. And yes, a lot of these will indeed take damage all at the same time. All right, that's going to create a lot more space here for all of those Zerg reinforcements to come in. There's one Infestor over here in the back. Infestors have a skill called Fungal Growth. It can absolutely demolish a Terran if they are not paying attention, but you can already see Maru pre-splitting his units. He does not want to be caught with his pants off guard. Okay, well, that's, that's a great snipe. He also sees this one coming in. Yeah, he does not want to be caught off guard. I don't think Zerg can go in there. Nah, absolutely no chance. Zerg can counter on Techno to the bottom right and corner. No Planetary Fortress over here. That is certainly a little bit greedy. That's going to make a lot of these SCVs run away for their lives. Planetary Doe over on the back of it. Here's that tactical nuke flying towards the center of the map. Did the ghosts already get taken care of? I believe so. The Mutas are close by and I don't really see any ghosts there channeling its ability anymore. So that nuke is going to be orbiting Radusat Station. We will never see it again. Nobody knows where it went. Ooh, Banelink's over there. Yeah, they run into the ghosts. Yeah, same for these Ultras. They run into the Liberation Zones, but that was not quite great right there for the Zerg. Those are the traits that are very cost inefficient. So, despite the fact that we did have a unit's lost advantage for the Zerg earlier, right now Terran is starting to inch ahead. Which is exactly why Maru is playing this game in the way that he is. If he can secure his side of the map, right? If he can force this game into a position where both players are mining 50% of the resources available, he will ultimately win! Fungal growth, big fungal growth, but there's nothing. There's no follow-up. Banelink's coming in from the right. We always have Metavex nearby as well to pick him up right now, though, and yep, there they go. Liberators, though, are in a world of trouble. Zerklings, once again, running on over towards the bottom right and corner as well. Maru's position over here seems to have been broken, and so is that base in the bottom right. Okay. Serral recognizes where this game is going, and he decides, no, I am not going to allow you to take your entire half of the map. So, it's that bottom right and base that's important, and then I guess this one over here too. Honestly, playing a split map scenario on Radusat Station seems very tough, but if anybody can do it, there's so many angles, right? I would say that Maru probably is the only one that can really get it going. He's trying his best to deny this gold base for quite a while already, but... Yeah, it's been mining for a bit. Maybe now is the time? Those Marines and Marauders with plus three, man. And plus three here, man. They deal so much damage. Ultra here at least standing tall for now. Banelings trying their very best to roll into whatever they can. Ghost forced to back off. Maru ends up losing a lot of his supply here. But that's mostly also because Zerk instantly remaxed and he did end up killing that hatch. That trade there in the end, I mean, it didn't look too great for the Terran. I don't know if it was awful. I mean, the Mutas are actually kind of like a wild card here, right? We, we so rarely see them that... Yeah, they, they don't usually just kill all of those Liberators. And losing those Libs and Ghosts really does, does hurt. Drones here, by the way, do get found. So that's quite painful. We've had five Ghosts going down, 11 Liberators. I think that's okay. I think that's manageable. Okay. Gold base, by the way, did stay alive. Serral took this base some time ago, but he doesn't really have a lot of time here to mine it just yet, or at least not amount, uh, the amount of drones that he really needs for it. He's got a ton of money in the bank, though. Yeah, but this is also not really a Terran position that can be quickly broken. So, despite the fact that Maru invested into a lot of command centers, he does need a little bit of time for them to pay off, but ultimately I think he's going to be able to get that as well. This has been a beautiful back and forth so far. Another tactical nuke coming up, by the way. Fungal! Big fungal once again on a lot of those bio units. But again, no follow-up. Okay, this time around, okay, the follow-up is a lot better with a few of those banelings sprinkling in. This is a fight on top of a planetary fortress, though. And even though SCVs are dying, they are a nice target here. Yeah. I'm not in love with that. Like, if you look at the supply count, it's maybe a little bit deceiving. It looks great for the Zerg. I mean, this damage over here on the bottom right is probably more essential than the one done over there, but... With so many of these orbital commands, he's got, well, 12 command centers here that I can see. Maybe he's got more somewhere, right? Like, he can just make two rounds of SCVs out of every single one of them, and he's gonna be okay. What Serral's trying to do, though, is he's trying to suffocate his opponent in this game. 
So you can see that Maru's bank is still not quite where it really needs to be. All of these additional orbital commands have not been paid for just yet. If you were to not have these orbital commands and you, well, added those 550 minerals for each of them to the amount of money that Terran currently has, the bank of his would look a whole lot better, right? Like, then suddenly we wouldn't really be talking about it, but Sero is trying to basically make it so that it's almost like a soft contain on the amount of bases that Maru is allowed to mine. So he's taking, okay, this one is allowed, this one's okay, the top three in the, well, spawning corner of you is fine, but I don't really want you to take any more bases from there. So denying the bottom right as well as the golden base seems to be, well, top priority for him. Maru, though, now engaging here in the bottom right. This Terran army is incredibly strong. We have, by the way, a transition towards Corruptors right now, so 20 Corruptors in total. Do we have a Greater Spire? Not yet. I actually think that's a pretty big oversight. We should certainly be going into a Greater Spire here. Uh, but the Corruptors here, for now, are mostly just produced to deal with the Liberators. Medivex, of course, also a target. Maru personally, uh, purposely, by the way, not m destroying these debris over here and not mining out the minerals. He does not want to give those Zerg units an extra access point into their bases. Planetary is going to end up going down at the gold. At the same time, though, Maru is making another shove here as well for the golden minerals on the other side of the map. I say the other side of the map. It's not that far apart, huh? It is technically the mirrored location, I suppose. Serral's been absolutely relentless with the Zirkling counterattacks, though. 471 average actions per minute here by the Zerk throughout this game. You can do the math. Base in the top right-hand corner, retaken. And we are once more trying to take this base over here, too. What a beautiful back and forth. Interestingly enough, by the way, Serral has not really gone for any Viper play. Normally, Parasitic Bombs on Liberators and Metavex. Yeah, it's one of the priorities for Zerks, but not in this particular instance. We do have a Hydralisk then. We do not have a Lurker then, however. So Serral not really improving his tech. Not going for a Greater Spire yet. Big Fungal Growth once again! Can these units disappear? Oh my god. Well, some of them did get picked up, but this is still looking rather costly here for the Terran. Lings and Banes are usually your best answer against these ghost-based armies, but nice splits there as well from the Terran. Yeah, the Liberator army uh, at least has now been dealt with. I'm a little concerned, like, what happens here if Serral does not have a great Aspire and he kills all of the Liberators. At that point, the Corruptors here are just going to be dead supply. I mean, they can kill Metavex and maybe use their Caustic Spray ability on stuff, but it is important to have some sort of way of... Mutating them into something that can deal with ground units too, and usually a greater spire. I mean, we see him selecting it. A little selection circle underneath. This is the most obvious choice. Maru, by the way, unable to really do that ghost mech transition in this game, right? Yes, he's got a lot of money, but not like to the point where he can also do a full tech switch. He's got good upgrades for his mech units, but he doesn't really have the money here to add on like a dozen... Well, maybe not a dozen, maybe like five or so... Um, factories at this point. He doesn't really have that option. So instead he's just sticking around on his bio-based army. Another big fungal growth over here, but that one is a bit costly because the infester does end up falling. So nice snipe right there by our Terran. Widowmine over here as well, just trying to be as annoying as possible. Also used as a scouting tool. Infester now together with a Zerkling actually. Yeah, there's two units side by side, I guess. Anyways, um, it's burrowed right over here. And that's gonna make it difficult for the Terran to land that command center. At least without the Zork player being fully aware of what's going on. Again though, Maru is protecting this base in the bottom right hand corner with a planetary and a liberation zone, but... That is a lot of damage being done by Bane, so though, eh. Nothing all too crazy, I actually kind of expected more SCVs to go down. The missile turrets right now are being constructed over here as well to deal with all of those corruptors. Big Fungal Growth once again coming in from the north! Bailing connect everywhere! Sero is suddenly overwhelming a lot of these units. Ghost forced to split off. Ultras here will ultimately end up getting destroyed, though, by those snipes. What a game. A hundred more Zerklings on the production tab. That was the fight, I think, that Sero was looking for for a little while already. Plus, there's still one pesky Zerkling here. Microed away out of the zone of that uh, Liberator, but also that Planetary Fortress. Picking up the SCVs that are as close to those mineral fields only. Okay. 
So, the reinforcements of the Zerg are out on the map. Well, with the exception of these Ultras. They will be out very soon. Is Serral gonna be able to capitalize on this right now? So he's got the tempo advantage, that's for sure. Terran is running out of juice. I mean, honestly, the majority of their mining is now happening in that base in the bottom right-hand corner, and that's exactly where those Corruptors are now headed to as well. They are gonna be using their Caustic Spray ability on whatever they have. Liberator over here will get destroyed. Zorklings and Banelings have denied that base over here in the middle. That was a nice Baneling detonation with the Widow Mines, but look at the amount of money still available here for Serral. Calm and calculated here, dude. Clinical precision. Like, if I ever need to get brain surgery, and Serral happens to be my brain surgeon, I think I would I would trust it. Yeah. This is honestly perfect approach here. Dealing with chaos very, very nicely. And not really taking any incredible chances, right? Like, there's no luck involved in this particular game. He's not trying to, like, just hit a lucky Baneling strike or anything like that. No, it's calm collected, trying to deny those bases, and... Despite the fact that this map is maybe not played very frequently, it's clear that both players have a very good plan going forward. And I think ultimately, the strategic choice here from Maru to play this big split map game on the Aradu set station is a mistake. I don't think that's what you should be playing here. Maybe not against Serral at the very least. Again, very cost efficient trades here for the Terran overall. It's just that he doesn't have the money anymore. Serral can remax this again. 82 Zorklings on the production tab. Corruptor still around as well. Now these bases are becoming a desperation, though. Maru needs them. Yep. There's one skinny mineral field remaining over here. Third, fourth, fifth, all of these bases are run out. So the golden base now becomes critical. We still have one command center that didn't grow a hat on top of itself yet, so that one's gonna be turned into a planetary fortress. I think Serral realizes this, too. He does have vision of the bottom right and corner. Maru realizes that he cannot hold that Zerg army in the middle of the map. And it's going to be the Finnish Zerg who obtains the victory in game number one. That was some fine StarCraft 2. I've been playing this game nearly every day for 13 years. And sometimes I look at pro games and I'm like, yeah, I could do that. I'm pretty decent, right? I've, I've, yeah, I've got some skills. I, I can do that. And then I look at games like the previous one. Those guys are managing so many different things at once. They're thinking about so many different things so quickly. The decision making, uh, it's one of those things you can practice, but I almost kind of feel like that's inherently something you either have or you don't. Like you have to be sharp with your decision making and not really regret your decisions when they go wrong either. That's something I notice a lot in my own games. Like I make a decision, it doesn't work out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Why do I, why did I do that? Blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of like trash talk myself mentally for like the next 20 seconds, even though I should be setting up new things at that exact same time. I'm sure there's a couple StarCraft players, maybe this is relevant to other sports too, that can relate to that. It's very easy to get stuck with your previous decisions and think about them for too long. But you can't really commit that much brain power to things that aren't relevant to the game you're playing at that point, you know? It's all about, okay, this happened, what do I do to move on? And that for basically half an hour straight. One thing to note is that these guys obviously have practiced a lot, but pro gamers do still get mentally exhausted from time to time. I mean, that was just a single game. They can usually focus for hours on end, but these games are certainly draining. Not even just mentally, but actually also physically. You'll oftentimes notice it, even though these guys are just sitting, you know, behind a mouse and keyboard, they will be pouring with sweat when they're playing at a tournament setting. And it's not necessarily, normally those, those big halls that we're playing at, it's not because of the temperature there. Normally it can be quite chilly. But a lot of the guys are just, uh... Be interesting. If anybody ever uh, wants to do like some sort of research, I'd be very interested to find out how many calories StarCraft 2 players burn on a tournament day. I know studies like that have been done for chess. And it's absurd. Like it turns out the brain consumes a lot of calories. Like way more than you would ever imagine. I would love to see a similar study for esports, I guess, in general, but especially StarCraft 2, because in my mind, StarCraft 2 is the most physical esport, which is kind of an interesting thing to say, I guess, because I think a lot of people look at esports players and they're like, yeah, they're just sitting there with a controller in their hands. Like, what's the, what's the big deal? But StarCraft 2 is something special, man. Anyhow, what exactly do we do this time around? Nothing all too crazy. It's going to be a... 
a Reaper into a Marine. Overlord coming in from the side. This is Serral special. He loves doing this, but getting this Overlord snipe would be huge. I don't think he's going to be able to get it. Nah, I don't think that's ever going to be uh, in a range for long enough, but... Just hurting this Overlord a little bit is already very impactful, because now Serral is not going to be able to get a follow-up scout very easily. That being said, Zorklings are just about to find their wings in about 12 seconds. And that's going to make life a little bit easier for the finisher. He did pull all the drones out of gas. He's going to commit right now to a scout. Can he figure out exactly what's happening? That's the question. Now he sees Hellions here, so at least that's a 1-1-1. One, one, one. No scout up to the high ground. This one, trying its very best. Okay, it gets blocked. It turns out what we have right here in this game... Oh, Marine. Oh, the Marine obviously got sniped earlier from those links as well. That's why they split off to the left. Um, yeah, the Overlord now is going to be able to figure out exactly what's happening. It turns out, though, this is just a very old-school 1-1-1. One, one, one. So this is one barracks into a command center, into a factory, reactor on the barracks after a Reaper and a Marine. Then you switch over, you start pumping out those Hellions. Usually you make like six, maybe eight, sometimes a little bit more than that. And then a uh, barracks with a tech lap on it, you switch it over to the starport, you go for two Benchies, a Benchie speed, and then eventually a third. Nice catch right here, though, from the Finnish player. Beautiful. That actually got shut down so hard. I'm surprised Maru decided to dive that deep. Like, that was completely unnecessary. I think the Hellion dive is really nice when you do have the Benchies to go around with as well. So say you can distract the queens with the banshees over here, or maybe the queens are in the main base. Then suddenly a Hellion run by when it's only Zerklings to deal with is much more powerful. But in this particular instance, I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that uh, Hellion sacrifice. It's going to make any follow-up aggression now a little bit harder. Because only three Hellions remain. The three Hellions is enough to one-shot a drone. So if you can get a dive into the Zerg base, it certainly still is an option, but... I'm not in love with it, so the problem is, right, with this opener and why it's a little bit old school is that your third command center, especially compared to the previous game, but even in just like, quote-unquote, normal openers for Terran, it's very late. Meaning that you're almost forced to deal damage on the other side of the map to justify the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You can see Saro already at like a 10-worker lead. This is him playing a very safe game too, so he has defensive Zerklings, he did make Spore Crawlers. This is not really a position where Serral is, uh, yeah, really cutting corners. He's going to be able to get four base saturation before the Terran can really get anything done here. If Maru does not commit to some sort of aggression here sometime soon. But you almost rely on your opponent making mistakes in the base defense, if that makes any sense. It's not the end of the world, certainly not. But that's the reason why we don't really see this opener very often anymore. The more modern iteration of this build would be to go for the third command center before the starport. So you do the exact same thing, except you go for the third starport, or the starport rather before the third command center, or no, sorry, the third command center before the starport. So in this case, it was starport first and then a third command center. Anyways, I can talk about strategy all day long, but just know that this is not a great starting point right here for Maru in this game. One thing Maru did do though, and this is gonna get scouted as well by Serral, who again is relentless with his map vision, he sees this coming in from a mile away. It's a mass barracks transition. It's a lot of additional reactors. This is going to be tons of marines, siege tanks, medevex. Maru making himself up for one of those Bjorn-esque attacks, right? This is what Bjorn really likes to do. Try and get that tempo going. But I feel like the tempo has already been sort of thrown out of the window a little bit. Serral just patrolling units left and right over at home in the meantime. All right, Bailing Speed is coming up. Bailing speed is a very important upgrade. It will shut down most of that mid-game aggression from the Terran quite nicely, because any fight on creep, and you can see the creep has been pushed forward very nicely already, is going to be much easier to handle. Okay. Good timing on the armory. He's going to be able to go into 2-2 nice and quickly. Hydralis then this time around for Serral too. Yeah, so I think both players played the builds that they did in the previous game. Mostly just because of Raduset Station. I think they both just decided to play those strats specifically, at least the early game strats, and maybe up until like the Muta transition. I think that was mostly just done based off of the map layout alone. So it's going to be Hydraling Bane this time around. I can imagine we will see a quick Lurker transition too, but Serral doesn't need to. He could certainly stick around on just Hydraling Bane for a very long time and maybe bring some spellcasters in for support later on. 
Okay. Zork has already set up a large clump of units here as well in the bottom left hand corner. Ready to surround this army if he needs to. Serral wants to wait until 1-1 one, one is done. You can see it right there on the right side of your screen. He really does not want to engage until those upgrades are finished. But is he going to commit? Unless Terran's dancing over here and he needs to address this? I don't know if he will. Well, he is certainly going to collapse on top of this. There are Zerg units everywhere. But Serral's like, yo, if you want to fight, come and face me. I'm going to sit here for as long as possible. I'm going to reinforce this for as long as I can. There's a large amount of Terran units now moving through the center of the map as well, but this really isn't much of a risk here for the Zerg just yet. He needs to commit though before those Terran reinforcements arrive, and it's a perfect timing here from the finisher once again. Right before those reinforcing units get here, he cleans up all of this army. That being said, nice crisis management as well right there by Maru. Yeah, this aggression's not over just yet. He picked up a lot of those units inside of the Metavex. Since there's no Hydras out and no Mutas or, well, anything really that shoots up other than the Queens. There's a... Not an easy way to properly clean all of this up. Banelinks? Okay, I was gonna say. They need to be very careful. Maru will be manually retargeting with the Siege Tank in the middle of that Banelink clump. Lots, uh, lots of Zorklings right now on the other side of the map. I think the Terran reinforcements, though, are gonna be okay. He decides to commit here again. These links are probably gonna be required to defend this push as well. And that's why they are coming back home. Okay. Siege tank is unseached. I think we can pick up and get on out of here with everything. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that's a very ambitious siege. That is not going to happen. Okay. So, ultimately, Cero cleans this up, but that took ages. Fourth command center, in the meantime, has finished up. Plus two, plus two. Actually late for Maru. This is a mistake. His armory was on point. But his 2-2 is now significantly later than the Zerks. And ultimately, he finished up 1-1 before the Zork player did, if I'm not mistaken, so... He certainly was a little preoccupied right there, macroing, and... Yeah, it ultimately slows down any sort of follow-up aggression quite a bit. The tempo that Terrans usually rely on, taking a bit of a beating. Same for this hatchery, though. Nice snipe right there on the base. Then she will end up getting sniped, and... Yeah, these siege tanks, man. They're costly. Serral crossing his T's, donning his ice. Love that, by the way. Medivac bait to allow that siege tank to get more damage up on the low ground. Or down, I guess, towards the low ground. Okay. This is a difficult position to break. But ultimately, I think that's just too much Zerg. Yeah. Alright, so, there's the infestation pit. We'll probably have a lurker den in just a moment. Fourth command center is now finishing its planetary fortress, and command center number five is coming too. This would be the opportunity to go for a transition towards the Ghost. I think the Ghost is going to be a very helpful tool. Hive is pretty late here though, all things considered as well. So despite the fact that Maru is maybe a bit late on his 2-2, he should be able to get back in the upgrades uh, with the 3-3 research. Because for Zerk, in order to go for 3-3, they need to have a Hive for Terran. They need to go 2-2 with uh, an armory, and, well, it turns out for 3-3, the armory is also a requirement, so they don't need any additional tech. Medivac drop here, not going to happen. There's indeed the ghosts, and there's the lurkers. Okay. Maru once again, though, engaging in this area of the map. Transitioning towards Widow Mines is an interesting one to me. His opponent is going Hydras. Hydras take a lot of damage from Siege Tanks, and on top of that, they outrange Widow Mines. So I don't really love that transition, to be honest. Still, though, doubling down on it, making loads and loads of them. Beautiful split. Widow mines that are sprinkled all over the center of the map, not really allowed to achieve all too much. Now, one thing that I do really like right here for Maru is the amount of workers that he's got. So, despite the fact that none of his aggression has really worked out particularly great, he does find himself with a stellar economy in this game. Basically the same as the Zerg, not even really taking any mules into account. Now this YOLO drop over here... I'm not in love with it, but it's not awful. No, it's actually working out quite well. Oh my god, really? The Metafex live? In the meantime... Cero purposefully not sending his entire army to the main. That was beautiful. Sorry, I just want to highlight that. Because I've tried that in my own games. I'm, I've backed up like 10-15 seconds. I've tried that in my own games. So he waits until the last moment there to move that link. So he knows there's the line, moves the Zerkling up. 
I know there's gonna be at least five gold league players right now inspired by that, and they're gonna give it a try, and they will pull the wrong unit and everything dies. <laughs> I know that because I've done that mistake many times myself, and I'm like, I've seen Cyril do this. I feel like my mouse accuracy is pretty good. Yeah, you cannot fat finger any of your buttons. You cannot make any misclicks. Cute little move for sure. All right, lurkers are on the horizon, but ghosts are already out. Sarah having a bit of a difficult time to really establish himself on this map. Trying his best to spread the creep around and whatnot, but could split there as well. <laughs> That's so fast. That was moving, moving targets as well, right? So you have to kind of like pull units out of a ball like that. Okay, finally it looks like Sarah is going to be able to get some sort of counterattack damage done. Lovely play here, though, by Maru. Instantly replacing the command center that's been lost with the one, I guess, from the main base. Yeah, so the main base is going to the natural, the natural is going down south. We have more command centers finishing, and this base over here on the left, which, look at that, Serral does not know about it. He's gonna be sending a unit on over in that direction right now, but again, he gets intercepted here by Terran units in the middle of the map. Widowmine drop on the right side, too, so this can definitely get some work done. Well, I say that. He will have to unload the units. Yeah, not like that. Okay. Push over here at the bottom, though, I think is more critical, as Maru is going to be able to shut down another base. Lovely harassment. You can kind of feel the momentum shifting a little bit, right? In the previous game, it was pretty clear that Serral was able to just hold everything very nicely, and he didn't really have all too many problems. It was him in the driver's seat of all of those attacks. Right now, you can say the same thing, but in favor of Maru instead. He's done an excellent job controlling this Zerg and pushing back the creep and making sure that there's not that many bases out. I think the most obvious thing to note is the creep spread is just very lackluster compared to what Serral is really aiming for. He wants to creep up the entire map, but so far he just really hasn't had the chance. Well, he's had the chance, but the opponent just constantly denies it, I guess. Maru, by the way, going for another base over here. Yeah, the command center explosion has been found on the left side. Looks like we're gonna get two split map games in a row, by the way. I haven't seen... Well, I have seen a few, but they're pretty uncommon these days. We haven't seen that many of them. Alright. There's a lot of bio army over here. Looks like we're just gonna remorph the planetary fortress. Fair enough. Maru feeling confident that he can indeed get that done. A lot of missile turrets set up, mostly just to surface detection, right? Ooh, ghost over there do end up getting down. That's not really what you want here as Terran. Plus three infantry weapons, though, just finished up already, and suddenly these units, they do pack more of a punch. Okay. So now the momentum is once again equalizing a little bit. saro has got notes over here. He's got taps of this base in the top section of the map. And he is trying to control the left side too, but with less success. Obviously, one way to, to win a split map, right, if you do go the distance, is to take one of the bases that ordinarily would be one of the Terrans. So if you're the Zerk and you're like, hey, maybe this base is, uh, well, maybe I can't really deny the left side of the map anymore, but maybe you can take the base up here instead. There's a lot of potential still, because if you have enough creep around and you have your lurkers in clever positions, it's really tricky for the Terran player to break it. If Maru, however, sets up this base right now, I almost kind of feel like that would seal the deal. That's exactly what Serral's trying to avoid. Lurker's moving forward, but Liberator's set up. Nice snipe over there as well. Viper's coming. And here's the starport transition. So two additional starports coming up. That is ultimately going to be very handy, as we do have Lurkers now engaging the bottom left-hand corner of the map too. That planetary is not going to happen. Well, it happened at least for a little while. Not for very long. Um, the starport transition is going to be very handy for that Liberator. So, the Liberator group got shut down really hard in the previous game by the Corruptors, right? Plus three Corruptors apparently pack a punch. This is a little bit different here for Zerg this time around. Instead, we're going to be going into Vipers. So, Vipers have an ability called Abduct. You can abduct units from a distance. The problem is they're also spellcasters, and the Ghosts are an excellent answer against any sort of spellcaster play in general. So if you can land an EMP on any of those Vipers, they can't abduct, and that ultimately allows those Liberators to rule the skies. 
Also, we only have two Vipers right now. We don't really have that many Libs yet either, but... Judging by the fact that we do have reactors coming up here on these new starports... I think it's safe to assume we will be seeing them here. In large numbers momentarily. At this point, Maru is also maxed out, so he can't actually add on any more at this moment. Okay. Still a lot of mining here, though, for Serral. If we have a look right now at the income advantage, yeah, you can tell that he's had enough mining here. But resources lost? Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's certainly not bad here for Serral. Maybe my commentary has been a little bit too Terran biased in this game so far. It's just that we see so many of this, this type of game, right? And we see it go south for the Zerk at some point, especially against players like Maru. But Serral's holding on here and he still has 82 workers, he still has good amount of bases. He's not trying to take one of the bases that would be considered the Terrans. It's not going to happen, but at least he's uh, he's fighting here. Ooh, no council on that base, so that is 300 minerals and the drone down the drain. Oh my god, he accidentally caught an SCV transfer up north. They were headed for that new planetary fortress. Zerklings now suddenly run into the natural in the main base. These are fully upgraded links, so they deal a tremendous amount of damage. You need to address this. They will bite their way through structures very quickly. Liberators are like the most awkward unit to kill Zerklings with ever. 18 SCVs go down just like that. Lurkers over here now working as well on that faraway planetary fortress. Where those SCVs were headed. And this is all you really need as a Zerk. Maybe the pendulum was swinging in favor of Terran there, but suddenly... I think it swung around to the other side once again. Loads of resources in the bank right here for, t well, for both players really, but especially for the Zerg. He can remax this very quickly. He's now also in a position to just blow up these planetary fortresses and... Is this enough? I think it is. Yeah, it is gonna be enough ultimately. Yeah, he's, he's got enough money and now suddenly, you know what, this gets very awkward here for Terran. These bases that he's got mining right now, they've been mining for like, a long time. After about 10, maybe 12 minutes of mining, the bases in general in StarCraft 2 start running low. And I think this one has been up for, well, maybe not quite 10 minutes yet, but it's getting there. And that means that these outer bases are becoming more and more critical. Serral may mostly just unhindered here, mining the top section of the map. So top right and you know, these two bases, they have been mostly his from start to finish. Not a lot that the Terran has been able to do about it. But then again, expending now for the Zerk is tricky as well. He once again decides to go for the base over here, it makes sense. But it's in range right there of the sensor tower, so Maru is going to be able to see it from a mile away. Fungal growth! Big fungal growth over here in the bottom left hand corner of the map. Ghost desperately trying to run away for their lives. Look at the Liberators though, putting in so much work. We have a parasitic bomb going down instead. Ah, nice and all, but that was very costly for the Zerk in the end. That parasitic bomb was nice, the fungal growth was nice, but nothing of it really allowed him to wombo it, right? Like, no wombo combo. If you don't have a combo here and you can't finish off those units, bruising them is not really what you're looking for, because they will be healed back up by either SCVs or Metavex. Suddenly now, Maru pushes forth. He gets another one of those bases destroyed off the Zerg. If he now also shuts down that base with some of his reinforcements, that would be amazing for him. The Liberators are, yeah, they're ruling the skies. There's a lot of tight choke points on side Delta, so... Maru smelling blood over here, decides to go for one more base. It is important that he does not get carried away though with this aggression, because now he's deep onto creep. Yeah, there's once again infestors everywhere. Zorklings have found a way all the way around, where they can suddenly make their way on over towards the bottom left. We're now at 12 libs, by the way, which is really nice. Oh, Metafex? Oh, big mistake. Big mistake from Maru. Very painful. I mean, he does have the starports to replace him, but they are not cheap units. If you look right now at the resources at the bottom of your screen, I think Maru overextended a bit. This base over here is a difficult one to acquire. Serral uh, constantly just denying it with those lurkers, and he did go for the base over here in the middle. No protection here, by the way, from the Zerk at all. So any sort of harassment here would be welcomed, but I think Maru is busy putting out fires in the bottom left. Not really thinking about denying that base that, well, probably should be his. Another split right there against the Widow Mines. Okay. A lot of SCVs going down. 
Zorkling's dealing so much damage. Parasitic bombs bruising a lot of units, but the ghost still holds strong, yeah. So we have had 13 ghosts going down, but there's still 14 of them available. And they, s <laughs> they just deal so much damage. Then again, though, ultimately the usual counter against ghost is just good old Hydralink Bane. And that's exactly where Cero is switching to again. Couple Vipers, couple Investors for support, but Vipers and Investors, rather, not Vipers and Investors. <laughs> Anyways, he's gonna be able to get those spellcasters going too, and this is not really a unit composition that the Ghost is amazing against. Saron also taking the opposite base, by the way. This is something that Maru was trying to acquire. Okay, yeah, I think evacuating the drones away from this location is indeed the right call. That hatchery is not gonna live for long. But at least quite a few minerals were mined, and if Terran does decide to take it later on, it's gonna be a lot more skinny. Right away, though, as Terran's leaving that location on the map uh, behind, apparently we're gonna just remake the hatch once more. This is a blip on the radar. The sensor tower does see this coming in. Once again, Terran army over here, wandering around the center of the map. We've seen quite a few of those Terran units just get picked off for basically free. Okay. Maru, trying to take out bases left, right, and center. He's gonna be able to get rid of another hatch, but at the same time, we have a similar setup as we saw on Raduset earlier. Planetary here protecting together with the Liberator, the SCVs that are mining towards an orbital command. The main advantage of the orbital over the planetary is that the orbital command can fly, whereas the planetary fortress cannot lift off anymore. Mara once again, using the map's layout very nicely though, pushing into these tight choke points and almost like inviting the opponent to come in there. Zerk cannot push there, so that's a base going down. Okay. Serral's still with tons of money in the bank, so he's not desperate for resources, but... He needs to get another base up here, for sure. I don't think he's got enough money mined right now to go and win the game. One thing that is a little bit lacking here for the Terran is the air weapons. I would have loved to see some additional upgrades for those Liberators, although I guess they one-shot most everything anyways. But still, when you have this many, no good reason not to. Two command centers, okay, well, at least a lot of SCVs go down too. Hatchery in the middle of the map once again, in a little bit of trouble. It will end up going down, but Maru having a hard time mining out these outer bases in the bottom left. Okay, suddenly though, it's Maru who seems to want to go a little bit deeper onto the creep. Once more, he's at like a, an intersection over here, right? Scanning, getting rid of the tumors. Making it hard for the Zerk army that was mostly in the bottom left hand corner to really come in from the site. And that means that this base over here is going to be in trouble. And maybe the same can be said as well for the base in the top right. Liberators slow pushing forward. Ghosts also move forward too, and they're going to try their very best to... Stay pre-split, right? Last thing you want to have happen right now as the uh, the Terran here is get fungled. Zork, though, is setting up a massive surround once again, and apparently Serral decides to pull the trigger. This is the moment where he decides to commit and fight his entire army. Okay, we have a few abductions going down, but the ghosts on the right side are still standing strong. That was not a good fight there for the Zork in the end. He wanted to destroy this position and clean up those Terran units because of the fact that this is where his lifeline is. Like, the right side of the map is where these bases are located, and that was a bit of a desperation move right there for Serral, for sure. Instead, taking these bases in the bottom left, I wouldn't even mind seeing him try to take the base in the bottom left all the way. Um, like this one that Terran's been mining for a bit, I think that probably would have been a strategic choice that he considered but just decided not to go with. Drones here, in a world of trouble. This is the majority of the workers, it seems, that the Zerg had out on the map. There are still some over here, and obviously there's plenty of hatcheries to reinforce any workers with, too, but now suddenly that massive bank that Sero had a few minutes ago, it's been dwindling, and Maru, rock solid in this game. Sure, he's had some troubles in the bottom left, but ultimately, he's really been controlling this map wonderfully. One hero marauder over here stims forward, tries to go after as many drones as he possibly can. At the very least, denies another base from coming up there. That's tons of drones that have just fallen. Love story between a Zerkling and a... Lurker right there for just a moment. As they were staring at each other longingly, but... Okay. 
few more meta effects. End up going down for essentially free. Okay, now it's Serral's turn to get maybe a little bit desperate here. The supply count is really not looking that great though. He doesn't really have a lot of gas. He never really mined the gases in the top right hand corner if I'm not mistaken. Or at the very least he didn't start with it. GG is cold as Serral finds out he cannot break this position. And that means indeed that our ultimate score is a 1-1. One Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video and you've made it all the way until the very end, please show your support by hitting the like button down below. It only takes about a second and it really does help. And of course, I try to upload new videos pretty much every day, so if you enjoyed watching it a lot, you can hit the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now though, have a great rest of your day, don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again tomorrow for another cast.